we are party all participants. Uh, we are going now to begin uh, with the session three. Please take your seat. And I would like to uh, inform to all guests, please scan QR code and informing the program. And the conference will be start in five minutes next to from this. And Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the seminar will be begin in shortly. Please be seated and kindly turn off and set your phone for the silent mode. And your cooperation will be very appreciated. Uh, I would like to inform to all guests, please scan QR code for the evaluation form and for registration. Uh, the conference will start with the keynote speaker. He is Professor Dr. Mian Nadim. Uh, he is expertise of the Professor of Food, Diversity, Nutrition, and Food Science Department. And he is the director for the Process Engineering, R&MD, Center Formerly Food Protein, R&D Center. The area of expertise, he is uh, on the food science and food technology on Halan food production. A qualification and education, he is uh, in PhD in food science from the Texas A&M University. On behalf of uh, the Thailand Halan Assembly 2018 committees, I would like to extend our warm welcome to all of you on this international Halan Science and Technology Conference, the 11th Halan Science Industry and Business, or HACIP. We are about to start in the session three. Session three is about uh, the topic of innovative food contact materials as in Halan expected. The, our chairperson or session chair is Dr. Professor Dr. Mian Nadim uh, from Texas University uh, from United States of America. Now, the session are uh, going to begin. I will share this floor to Dr. to Professor Dr. Mian Nadim Rias to moderate this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the introduction. Uh, this is the third session, and we're going to be on time, inshallah. Please have a seat, and then we're going to invite uh, all our speakers this afternoon. Yes. I was told there's one change in the speaker, and we are replacing that with some other person, but hopefully we'll go there. Very good. Let me first uh, invite uh, our first speaker, Professor Dr. Arwandi. <laughs> And uh, he is uh, from university. Our second speaker is uh, Brother Ahmed M. Yusuf, Professor of Packaging. Our Third speaker is a good friend of mine, Dr. Ashkri. And uh, fourth speaker was Mr. Tahir, but we are replacing it with Dr. Chasak. Okay, we have uh, four speakers, and we have only, I believe, one hour. And uh, each speaker get 15 minutes. And if we, somebody finish early, maybe we can have a question answer. Otherwise, we will continue. And I'm sure there will be plenty of time that uh, you can ask during uh, 
lunch time, uh, during uh, coffee time and all that time that you can ask some of the question with that at that time. With that, it's my honor to introduce you our first speaker, Dr. Avandi, and he is the Dean of Academic Research and Publication at INHART, International Islamic University. He is uh, f a food chemist, as well as uh, food process, process engineers. And he has done quite a few qualifications, uh, postdoc, lipid biochemistry, and also he is a PhD exchange program in Canada. And uh, he is well known, and uh, he was told me he was coming, we both came same flight, and we are both sharing the same rights. And uh, he was told me that he got King Fahad, the Saudi award last year as well, from Saudi Arabia for his research work. With that, uh, I'm going to ask uh, our first speaker, please uh, start your presentation on innovation food materials for enhancing the quality of halal product. And you have, uh, brother, 15 minutes. Inshallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum Thank you, uh, Professor Riaz. And uh, thank you to the Halal Thai Assembly Halal Thai Assembly for inviting me to this uh, uh, occasion. Uh, this is my third time uh, being here in Bangkok. Yeah, uh, this is a very, 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 very good annual event. Uh, the topics given to me is innovative uh, food materials for enhancing the quality of of halal products. <coughs> and uh, in this uh, session, I would like to share. Uh, our latest uh, okay. research. There are three of them, uh, but before that, we have to keep in mind that uh, uh, the concept in Islam, uh, halal, is 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 from A to Z. Yeah, and uh, we have to also understand it uh, to know that in every steps of this uh, 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 change, uh, there is a possibility for non-halal contamination, either from the slaughtering, from the ingredients, additive, etc., etc. So uh, among the potential critical areas uh, rele relevant to my topics today is uh, food ingredients and additive, uh, such as uh, pigs and its byproducts, uh, pork, lard, and gelatin. This morning session, we also already heard that uh, in the case of gelatin, a lot of... of, of uh, uh, controversial, a lot of issues there. And then also enzyme, for example, the use of rennet uh, in the production of cheese uh, causes of uh, undoubtfulness, yeah? uh, Emulsifiers, mono and diglyceride, for example, and uh, intoxicants, alcoholic beverages, uh, drugs, etc. So uh, my first topic is, is uh, what we call is uh, nanoparticles uh, gelatin, yeah? halal gelatin nanoparticles. The trend now in the industry is that uh, if in the past we know that this is collagen, the next one is gelatin. We hydrolyze collagen and we produce gelatin. But in the modern, uh, uh, in the current scenario of the industry, almost every, uh, we can cut the change, yeah? We can cut the, uh, of the protein wherever we want. How big the size of the molecule that we want, we can do that. It's almost like that, yeah? Using an uh, enzymatic process. That's why the use of gelatin, collagen, and uh, what we call is collagen, uh, hydrolyzed collagen, are very, very much uh, 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 used in industry, yeah? Uh, for food, for supplements, and also for pharmaceutical. This is the using gelatin and collagen hydrolyzed. This is uh, an example in the industry. And this is the reason why uh, in the last uh, at least uh, 15 years, we have been doing research, a lot of research related to coll uh, collagen and gelatin. Among them, uh, the current one is we produce a gelatin for heart capsule in collaboration with the Faculty of Pharmacy in the University of Indonesia. And we have successfully produced uh, a, a pharmaceutical capsule from halal gelatin from local source in Indonesia. And then, inshallah, there's one company interested to, to start the business here using our patent. Uh, we already conducted uh, about 30 species of, of fish gelatin in Malaysia. 
and with Saudi Arabia, we, we, we come up with the research on Camel Gelatin project, it's two years project, and then Alhamdulillah, it was successful. A fit gelatin nanoparticle in the applications. Why we use this first is the industry. A fish uh, 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 waste is abundant, yeah. And then the sum of the fish are very very good. Um, and I'm not saying it's comparable to porcine gelatin, but it can be used in, in the for industry, yeah. The, the uniqueness of our study is we produce nanoparticles. This now is uh, in the era of nanotechnology. Nanoparticle uh, much used in the, in the, especially in the cosmetics and, and pharmaceutical. So this is the study that we have done, Alhamdulillah. We got a uh, patent for this, and then one of the companies interested to start the, you know. And then the, there are two process that we, we, I mean the two applications. Number one is we use fish gelatin nanoparticle to encapsulate bioactive compound, and then we already applied in the, in the dairy products. So our dairy products now is a more functional, it's a more nutri uh, nutritional. Yeah? And second one is we use uh, a, a nanoparticle from fish for to encapsulate uh, uh, salicylic acid, and we use it for, for drugs. Yeah? We use it for cream and, and, and uh, in pharmaceutical application. Uh, this is this is some some photos of uh, our activities when we develop a halal gelatin, and this is our pilot plant of gelatin and derivative, so collagen, gelatin, and and in the product in between, and then uh, so this is some pictures the selection of biotin. What we encapsulate is bioactive peptide, uh, so our yogurt is more nutritious, yeah. Our yogurt is more nutritious because it contains more antioxidant. Okay, this is uh, just some um, picture, and then we, we conducted biochemical uh, simulation as well for gastrointestinal analysis. Okay, a uh, second one is high pressure processing. Uh, we just bought one machine, we call it high pressure processing. The good things about high pressure processing, we process the foods not in the, in the using thermal process, instead using pressure. Uh, it can be done at room temperature, and then how big is that? How big the pressure? I mean, the, it can go up to 1,000 megapascal. It's similar to two giant, and then you put in one small place, yeah? And then the good things about this, we can maintain the healthy freshness and the, and the quality of raw material while the food is safe for consumption because the pharmacogenic and all the microbial, harmful microbial are killed. And then this uh, three, there are three countries that uh, uh, promote this, this technology, uh, Japan, uh, Germany, and US so far, and India uh, starting as well. Okay, and then this is some products in, 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 in Japanese market that they use uh, uh, HPP technology. So we develop uh, HPP technology in our laboratory in Malaysia for extraction, number one, extraction of gelatin, and then it give a better quality of gelatin and a more yield. So in terms of, of industrial uh, perspective, it is uh, better. Second one, we use it for the third uh, category of my presentation today is for one of bioactive products uh, that we develop is Fukoxantin, yeah? So this is, the, this is the machine that we bought from Japan. Uh, the third one is I'm going to talk about the Fukoxantin. It is one of the carotenoids. Uh, Carotenoid, as you know, is, is very, very useful uh, uh, natural pigment. Uh, pigment, uh, for example, is or, uh, beta carotene, uh, or lycopene, uh, zeaxanthin, yeah, a lutein. But in our study, we produce uh, what we call is fucoxanthin. This is a new one, uh, only developed in Japan so far. And it is developed for underutilized brown seaweed. In Malaysia, it is abundant, uh, never been utilized before, so that the price is zero so far. Yeah? When we do and dive uh, to collect the sample, within one hour, we can get about uh, 800, 900 kilograms. Yeah? And then the good things about this, it, it contains uh, health-promoting properties. Uh, antioxidant, which is 80 to 100 times better than 
uh, beta carotene uh, and you can say we have conducted study on more than 20 types of human cancer cell lines and some of them are positive give a positive response and then it contain anti-diabetic anti-inflammatory and anti-obesity for the last one the, this product is already sold in pharmacy in japan yeah this is some of our study and then we published in in the high reputable journal and then this is just example uh, that uh, you see WAT is white adipose tissue. White adipose tissue is the tissue responsible for obesity. And uh, FX is Fucoxantin. So if the Fucoxantin is given to the uh, mouse, then the, the, the white adipose tissue remain the same size while the control keep growing. So that's why it is considered as anti-obesity and the supplement is already sold. And this is some biochemistry analysis that we have done. Okay, I don't think you are interested in that. Metabolic pathway. And this is a focal certain intake uh, that we, 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 we administered to, to volunteer, Japanese uh, volunteers. And uh, within 30 days, so the body weight is significantly different. Okay. And this is some prototype. Uh, how we do this now, uh, our patent has been licensed to one company in Malaysia, and uh, we produce through supercritical fruit extraction. Supercritical fruit extraction is we extract the fucoxantin from raw material without using chemicals at all. So we just use uh, 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 this machine, and then the yield is, is, is better. Okay, and then uh, this product, can be used not only for food, yeah, as a natural pigment or supplement, but it's also used in the in the cosmetics industry. Okay, this, and then this is the final one. We produce a micro encapsulated fucoxantin for uh, 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 nature, for for industrial usage. I think with that, my presentation. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. I think uh, he finished uh, well in time. Therefore, we do have a time for maybe one or two questions. If anybody has a quick questions. Okay. If no, thank you very much. We will continue. Uh, our next speaker is Professor Ahmed Yusuf, and he's a professor at Packaging Materials at uh, Cairo uh, National Research Center in Egypt. And his experience is basically packaging and packaging materials. He is PhD in organic chemistry. And uh, he is also <clears throat> have done it, uh, quite a few other degrees from different universities. With that, uh, he is going to be talking with us about uh, his uh, title, which is Novel Materials for the Food Packaging Application. Brother Yusuf. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My presentation today under title Novel Material for Food Package Application. Outlines, uh, overview, introduction, polymer composite and nanocomposite types, preparation and the characterization, packaging, definition of packaging, type of packaging, and application of bi composite in packaging, conclusion and future outlooks. Uh, overview is uh, a short video about Egypt. Egypt. Okay. We we will uh, we will display it uh, after the finish of the session because this is some uh, technical error in the video. Also, this another uh, video about my research center, which I belong to it. Also, I will explain if we have time, we can uh, show it in the. Uh, end of session. Let us start my, our uh, presentation. Introduction, composite material. Uh, the definition of composite material, two or more intercreated uh, material in close contact to each other. Uh, in polymer science, composite material formed by combining different phases, either by filling, blending, compounding, mixing, or melting. Uh, this type of uh, com uh, composite material uh, the first type is laminated composite, which material layers held together by matrix binder. Uh, the second one, fibrous composite, which reinforcing the material by fiber is the matrix. Uh, particulated composite, 
the nanoparticle dispersed, the particle dispersed in the polymer matrix or composite matrix. Uh, this is composite material have many advantages, such as high stuffness, low weight, easy design, high strength. All this characteristic or this advantages make it is uh, suitable for different application, especially in aerospace and packaging application. Uh, on the other hand, the composite material have disadvantage, such as chemical attack, it's more expensive, slow and cost manufacture time related to the metal, and the mechanical properties is, uh, is uh, damaged rapidly. So this is this advantage opens the new research area of uh, uh, the, the, new, the, new the new research area is called nanocomposite. The definition of nanocomposite, uh, two phases material, one of these phases disperses the other phase in the nanometer level. This word is commonly used in the area of material science, ceramics, and polymers. Uh, this uh, nanocomposite uh, opened a new large variety of uh, material science, such as three-dimensional like nanodots, two-dimensional like la nano layers like be be clay platelets, one-dimensional like nanofiber, nanowire, nano roots, or nanotubes, uh, zero-dimensional like nano particles uh, such as metal oxide. This is a slide shows the uh, terminology of uh, composite and the bio nanocomposite. Why we call composite material or bio nanocomposite or uh, or composites or bio nanocomposite. This depends on the uh, nature of filler and the uh, polymer matrix. If the filler is in the micro <laughs> particles and added to uh, bio polymer such as uh, ketosan is called composite material bio composite. If added to a synthetic polymer such as lodinistic polyethylene or polypropylene or polystyrene, it is called the composite material. If it is a filler in nano structure or nanoparticles, added to biopolymer is called bio nanocomposite or synthetic polymer is called polymer nanocomposites. So we have two phases. The first phase is polymer, second phase is nanomaterial. First, we will take the nanomaterial. Solids of nano size can, cannot be prepared or modified by tra traditional methods, mainly because the reactants are not mixed on the atomic scale. So we have two main methods to prepare nanomaterial, uh, chemical method and physical method. The chemical method, such as hydrothermal method, salt gel, chemical vapor deposition, microwave oxidation reduction method, and the physical method is high energy, bulk milling. All these methods give the final product with the following characteristic. Nano size material, narrow particle size distribution, high surface area, homogeneous and pure. This is a slide shows the various type of nano particles or nano material used to be repair polymer bio nanocomposite. Nano particles such as gold nano particles, silver nano particles, titanium dioxide nano particles, nano platelets like clays, different clays, synthetic clays or natural clays, and uh, uh, the nanofibers, nanowires, nanorod, nanotubes, and the nanos. We will repair zinc oxide nanoparticle by using green method and uh, confirming the formation of zinc oxide nanoparticle by X-ray diffraction pattern and scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope. Also, we repair titanium dioxide and uh, confirm it and proving the formation of titanium dioxide in nano size by using X-ray and diffraction and the scanning electron microscope also transmission electron microscope. Then we start to prepare polymer bio nanocomposite by using uh, ketosan uh, extracted from uh, uh, sham shells, it's halal material and bio material uh, and the carboxymethyl cellulose extracted from rice straw, which is a cause a big problem in Egypt. So we, we use the waste material to prepare bio nanocomposite. Then added titanium dioxide or zinc oxide nanoparticles be repaired by green and eco-friendly method to be repair final product is called polymer by nanocomposite and start to make suitable characterization to prove the formation of nanomaterial or and uh, polymer by nanocomposite using scanning electron microscope for which uh, used to determine the uh, presence and dispersion of uh, the nanomaterial on the surface of the polymer matrix. Also titanium, uh, <clears throat> Transmission electron microscope used to determine the presence of the nanomaterial inside the polymer matrix, and we study XRD to uh, determine the presence and formation of the nanomaterial. Also, we we 
will use this material for package application. So this material should be has has good mechanical properties. So we use mechanical tester to determine the tensile strength and the elongation of the prepared films or package. Uh, also, this package material uh, should be thermally stable. So we use the transmission transmission uh, glass transmission analysis to determine the thermal stability of the uh, prepared nano uh, bio nano composite and also flammability start to uh, determine the flammability or fire resistance of the prepared uh, polymer bio nano composites we have uh, in our institute is the new inst uh, new inst instruments such as uh, water vapor transmission rate and the, and the gas transmission rate, which is very important to uh, characterize the material used for packaging application. Also, we study the antibacterial, antibacterial activity of the prepared bio nanocomposite against gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So, we added nanomaterial to the polymer to enhance the following characteristics. First, improve mechanical properties, increase toughness without loss of flexibility, dramatically reduce gas variability, and increase thermal stability, also increase fire resistance, and maintain uh, easy processing, such as extrusion or molding, uh, recyclability, open, uh, optical clarity, because we, if we need uh, to package food, we all customers need to see what inside the package. So it is still uh, optical clarity, flexibility, lightweight, and has uh, good antibacterial activity. All these characteristics, nano breathable to gas or liquid, flexible, lightweight, stuff, thin, and transparent, and still inexpensive, this all lead to use this material for packaging, uh, food package application. Uh, the barrier properties enhance mean due to the addition of uh, the, the clay, nano clay or, uh, or nano layer, through uh, because uh, th this forces the gas or liquid traveling through the film to follow the trachytis bus or the exact structure through the polymer matrix uh, surrounding the silicate, uh, silicate particles, thereby increasing the effective effectiveness bus lens for the diffusion of gas or liquid. Fire resistant or fire retardant of the prepared uh, biofilms. If the, this slide shows A is the uh, pure polymer. B is polymer nanocomposite subject to fire. A is completely burning, but uh, B resistance the fire, which is good for package application. Also, by addition, the nano particle or nano material to the polymer matrix enhance means the antibacterial activity against the gram positive and the gram negative bacteria. So we go to, to packaging. The definition of packaging, packaging serves a number of important functions, such as inhibition, product, protection, keeping sensory quality, and food safety. Food packaging requires also longer shelf life, along with the monitoring of the safety and the quality based on international standard. So polymer bio composite can address all these requirements and apply the principal packaging function, protection, preservation, marketing, and the communication. Polymer bio composite, in fact, can provide new food packaging material with improved mechanical barrier and the antimicrobial properties together with nano sensors for tracking and monitoring the condition of food during transportation and storage. Uh, the, uh, different, we have different type of packaging material such as polymer, which is the first stage, and the paper, metal, glass. Uh, the polymer global market, uh, around 42% used in package application, 30% in applicants and household and wires, 20% uh, in building and construction, and 8% in cars and automotive. Uh, type of packaging, we have different kind of back, uh, type or back of packaging, such as active packaging, vacuum packaging, modified atmosphere packaging, edible coating and films, intelligent or smart packaging. Besides, we have also three type of uh, packaging, Primary packaging, secondary packaging, tertiary packaging, and tertiary packaging. If we have a, a glass of water, the, the layer contact directly to the, the water is called primary packaging. But if we have a box containing several uh, glasses of water, it's called uh, secondary packaging. If we have container contain more box, it's called tertiary packaging. But if come to the specific uh, terminology, active packaging, 
Active packaging is designed to incorporate components that would release or absorb substance into or from packaging food or environmental surrounding the food. Uh, at this moment, active packaging have been mainly developed for antimicrobial packaging application. Other main promising applications include oxygen scavenger, acylene remover, carbon dioxide absorption or emission. Uh, vacuum packaging is an old and widespread technique useful to a variety of products. The main objective is prevent oxidation reduction, uh, oxidation reduction such as limit oxidation, loss of certain vitamins, loss of pigment. Uh, fruits, vegetables, and the fresh meat packaged under vacuum have shelf life of a few weeks under refrigeration. Vacuum packaging offer additional advantages such as reducing the volume, improvement in the rigidity of flexible package. Uh, modified atmosphere packaging it is very common and very used and very important to uh, countries which uh, transport the products because modified atmosphere packaging is inclusion of food products in high gas barrier films in which the gaseous atmosphere has been changed or modified to control respiration rate and reduce microbial growth such as red meat are packaged in atmosphere in which oxygen and the carbon dioxide content are important relative to air to keep the product color microbial growth inhibition and, the, and, the, and the microbial growth inhibition. Uh, edible films and coating uh, contain a unique uh, category of packaging material from other nanocomposite based packaging material and from conventional packaging by being edible. Uh, edible coating are applied and formed directly on the food product either by a liquid uh, film forming solution or molting, uh, molting compounds or using traditional plastic processing technique. Edible films and coating may provide barrier toward this moisture, oxygen, and the carbon dioxide. Nanoparticles can be applied uh, as a reactive uh, particles in packaging material to inform about the status of uh, the package. This is smart packaging or intelligent packaging. Uh, nano sensors are able to respond to environmental change such as temperature or humidity in storage room, levels of oxygen exposure, degradation product, or microbial contamination. Uh, smart packaging when combined into food packaging, nano sensors can be detect certain uh, chemical uh, compounds uh, such as uh, chemical compound, pathogen, toxin in food, being them useful to eliminate the need for uh, accurate expiration dates, providing real time status for food freshness. This is the symbol of uh, uh, films uh, for package application. Contained from five layers, three layers from traditional polymer, approved from FDA to contact directly with food. This traditional polymer may be polystyrene, polyethylene, low density uh, polyethylene, uh, polyethylene terephthalate, and we have two layers containing nanomaterial, nanostructure material to improving the barrier properties by, uh, by multiply layer structure, such as glass bottle. Impact of using polymer nanocomposite on health, three different ways of penetration of nanoparticle in the organism are possible. Inhalation through skin, penetration, and the ingestation. The first three, inhalation and the first two, inhalation and in the entering through skin penetration is related to the worker in the nanomaterial producing factors. For these workers, personal protection is recommended uh, with the use of gloves, Glasses, uh, glasses, masks with high efficiency specific uh, filters. Uh, for the final consumer of food packaging, of, of food packaged with nanomaterial, the first concern is to the verify the extent of migration of nanoparticle from the package into the food. And then if the migration happened, the effect of the ingestion of this nanoparticle inside the body from the mouth to the final uh, gastrointestinal uh, uh, tract, uh, we have more uh, work done in this field uh, by preparation of bio nanocomposite material and the uh, uh, package uh, uh, meat or uh, different kind of uh, cheese. I will I will skip it and uh, go come to conclusion. So, conclusion part. Polymer banner composite represent an inspiring way for creating novel innovative material. By adding uh, appreciated nanoparticle, it will be possible to produce package with stronger mechanical barrier thermal performance. Uh, 
polymer banner could they can reduce flammability significantly and maintain the transparency of the polymer matrix. Embedded nano sensor in the packaging material will alert the consumer if the food gone bad. A polymer biodynamic are a sustainable technology for new material for near future packaging application, especially for flexible, fire resistant, antimicrobial, transparent barrier films. A future outlook uh, what can be in the near future? Design and incorporate multi desired functionalities such as antibacterial, uh, antibiotic, antioxidant, biodegradable, uh, response to environmental or chemical change. Thank what you. can be in the not so near Brother, future? We have respect the time for the speakers too. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, that uh, brings us our third speaker, uh, Dr. Ashkare. Uh, he is from Halal Science Center, uh, University in, uh, from Bangkok here. And he is a chemist and also work with the nanoscience and he has PhD in pharmaceutical science and he is going to also give us a talk about uh, polymers in the pharmaceutical applications. Rashka, you have uh, 15 minutes, therefore yes. please start. Thank you very much for introducing me. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Good afternoon. I'm oh, sorry. Good afternoon uh, everybody. Today I would like to uh, give a talk in the topic of polymer in pharmaceutical application. First of all, I would like to uh, brief introduction about uh, polymer. Polymer is the large molecule that composes many repeating units. Uh, Sometimes you may be familiar with the plastic, uh, plastic product. Polymer can classify by the original of source based on the structure or intermolecular force and mode of polymerization. Based on the original of source, uh, we can separate into natural polymer uh, that can come from the plants, animal, and also microbial source, such as cotton or silk, and also the synthetic polymer or semi-synthetic polymer, such as polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride. And from the uh, chemical structure, we can separate into linear, branched and cross-linked or network. And also the intermolecular between two side chain of the polymer will give the different uh, properties of the po final po polymer, such as polyplastic, elastomer, and thermoset. And finally, the mode of polymerization we can uh, divide into chain polymerization and step polymerization. Uh, today we will focus on the bio or natural polymer. Natural polymer can uh, obtain from the plant original, animal, and microbial original. Uh, from the plant, it's mostly uh, we get the polysaccharide, such as psychodectin, cellulose, or starch, and but also some protein, such as from soy protein and some uh, higher plant, polyester. But we'll, we will focus on the uh, polymer from animal and also microbial original because this is related to the halan issue. Uh, from, the animal, from the animal original uh, <coughs> can give the polysaccharide, shut out from the, uh, uh, from the gym, from the chitosan, and mainly is from the protein such as the gelatin and collagen or some enzyme, and also from the insect, like a shellac. But if uh, we look at the, uh, the fermentation technology, we also can produce the sum of uh, polysaccharide, polyester, or polyamide uh, that ca can, can be uh, the polymer as well. So this slide shows the chemical structure of the, po uh, of the natural polymer. Uh, they have many features. And because of this, this is really useful for, for, for the good uh, property, such as biodegradable, biocompatible, and it's not uh, non-toxic, and also low cost and element friendly. Uh, as I mentioned, especially biopolymer, uh, bio Protein can form 
uh, plant, but we have to take care that is the GMO plant or not, or from the uh, bacteria or microbial uh, fermentation. We have to 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 take care that uh, the enzyme or the uh, culture media is for is some form the uh, halal sort or not. This slide show about the no, no, normally our gene is can extract from the plant, but with the fermentation technology, we can get the uh, alginate from from the fermentation, like, like, like this. Uh, and also, this technology can give variety of the polymer. This slide shows the polyhydroxy alkanate with the uh, desired property, such as the uh, lip, like, uh, rigid plastic or rigid or to the uh, flexible plastic. And if you add some material uh, group inside the, uh, the chain of the uh, polyhydroxy, they will give the different structure, different uh, final property. Uh, because of this, the fermentation technology is really useful in industry. Uh, CIMIC have launched two standards that related to, to use the uh, halal culture media and in, in the food standard and also cosmetic. So biopolymer can really useful in uh, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical application and different form, like a uh, different formulation, such as in, in terms of nano uh, nanomaterial or mice or liposome. This is because of uh, to improve the stability of the drug. Uh, reduce the side effect of the drug and also increase efficiency of the drug and so on. As you know, uh, our body have many, many uh, conditions such as the pH difference in the stomach, uh, pH uh, 1 to 5, and if the drug go to the uh, small intestinal, they will, uh, uh, pH will increase to 8. So the drug will uh, face with this condition if you decide uh, some drug delivery system to uh, to to uh, to respond to this condition, it will be useful for our uh, formulation. This slide show about the uh, uh, stimuli. They have many stimuli, such as pH, uh, enzymatic or redox reaction, and also the thermal responsive. If the the po your polymer from the biopolymer will have different conditions, such as high temperature, they will give some uh, different result, like uh, release or regulate the drug from the polymer that you end cap inside. Uh, this slide shows the chitosan that are really useful in, in biomedical application, that, uh, such as in vaccine and drug delivery, and gene uh, delivery, and also used uh, as the hydrogel. Because of the uh, structure uh, inside the chitosan, they also have the amino group that can protonation. Uh, so they have the uh, uh, cation in the in the polymer. So when that this uh, useful for the responsive to the pH. Uh, this slide show the control list to uh, uh, some drug that. Uh, respond to the pH. When you add more lower pH, they will more release. This also uh, thermal responsive from the gelatin. Uh, this slide shows the uh, responsive at the third, uh, 25 degree and also 40, uh, 40 uh, degree. And the release will give uh, different uh, bio Polymer also can uh, produce the scaffold, but the mechanical property uh, will not uh, fit to the uh, our body, so we have to add or uh, add more uh, polymer like a costling together with the synthetic polymer like this, and they will give the final or decide the properties of the, poly the of the final polymer. And this slide also the collagen based on biomaterial. You can form 
many many uh, formulation such as hydrogel uh, tube that you want to implant in your body or uh, produce in uh, fiber form. And finally, uh, we will conclude that uh, the uh, in the Haaland's uh, perspective, the source of Haaland is really important, even though it's from the biopolymer. And if uh, you can mix the polymer uh, to design the duct jury system uh, to uh, to according to the uh, your application. Thank you. Okay, that brings us uh, the last uh, our speaker. As I mentioned that the, we have a change in the speaker. Last speaker was scheduled Mr. Tahir, but we are replacing that with Dr. Chasek. Dr. Chasek is a, also in Department of Pharma, uh, Pharmaceuticals in uh, uh, University here, same. And uh, his ex experience is also in pharmaceutical botany and he is uh, going to discuss very, very technical. Hopefully everybody will understand it is the effect of a synergistic antioxidant combinations of uh, phyletus, amblica, and uh, alpinia. You can start. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Chai Sak, uh, Chansini Yom from Chulalongkorn University. Uh, thank you for invite, uh, invite me to uh, give a, a, a present my research in, in this forum. Uh, my topic is uh, effect of uh, synergistic antioxidant uh, combination of uh, Philanthus Embica and Alpinia Galanca on HMG-CoA reductase m -SAM. Uh, uh, Philanthus ambica and Alpinia galanca are food plant uh, that's used in Thai cuisine. Uh, Philanthus ambica, uh, you may know in the ambica or makam pom in Thai. Uh, you can eat it as a fresh fruit or you can cook it in the many menus such as paste or pickle. As for uh, Alpinia galanca, it's lysome called galanko or kolka in Thai. Uh, they can, there is a key ingredient in the, in the sour spicy soup, yeah, uh, especially in the high diet menu, yeah, uh, such, uh, such as tom kha gai or tom yam kung. Uh, as the, it, it has been reported, uh, the Ambika food, uh, is a list source of a natural uh, phenolic compound antioxidant, and also it has the lipid lowering uh, activities, uh, especially decrease in the LDL cholesterol. As for the galanko, it also shows the uh, lipid lowering property, but the, this highlight is about um, they can increase the HDL cholesterol, that is a good cholesterol. So I would like to uh, investigate uh, by uh, combine them uh, in, into the combination and uh, look for the synergistic antioxidant and synergistic uh, antihyperlipidemic. And as you know, now the correlation of the hyperlipidemia and uh, oxidative state uh, are well established in many studies. And uh, it's found that uh, acute uh, hyperlipidemia uh, can induce uh, oxidative state. Uh, this is my result. Uh, I'm combined uh, Philanthus ambica and Alpinia galanca in several uh, portion. Uh, and uh, we found that at the uh, ratio of the Ambika seven part to the Galanko three part, it shows the uh, strongest 
antioxidant in uh, against the DPPH radical, ABTS cation radical, and also superoxide anion radical. And I calculate uh, uh, the combination index use the composing software, and it showed us the uh, ratio uh, of seven to three of the Embika and Kalanko shows the synergism in all tests. Yeah, the the combination uh, index is described by Shu and Talale in 1983, uh, and it's based on the uh, the the concept uh, uh, in this uh, equation that the dx1 and dx2 is the doses of the drugs one and drugs two uh, inhibiting x percent, whereas d1 and d2 is the drugs one and drugs two in the combination, and if the CI values uh, or the combination index value less than one it indicates that it has the synergism <coughs> property. Um, I also uh, subject the, the, <coughs> the combined extract uh, to test in the, in the cell. Uh, I use the endothelium cell and use the hydrogen peroxide to induce oxidative stress. Uh, the result showed that the ethanolic extract of the uh, Embika and uh, uh, the combination have the can decrease the the inter intercellular oxygen species in the dose dependently. Yeah, and it found that uh, at the 50 uh, 50 microgram per milliliter of the uh, Philanthus Embika and the and the combination is as potent as the uh, positive control, the quercetin at 10 microgram per milliliter. Uh, and that have the cytoprotective effect uh, against the oxidative state that they can restore the cell survival uh, to nearly to the normal. I also test in the um, lipid peroxidation uh, inhibition, yeah, and it found that the, the, combined, uh, the combination uh, at the 50 micro, microgram per milliliter can enhance the lipid peroxidation inhibition uh, and has the potent as the quercetin at 10 microgram per milliliters. And for uh, chemical analysis of uh, the compound responsible for the activity in the extract, for the uh, Philanthus Embika, I found the ascorbic acid, gallic acid, and the allergic acid. And for the uh, Alpinia Galanka, uh, I found the uh, 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 cinnamic. Uh, a synamic derivative uh, compound uh, that is that's a uh, para acetoxy cinnamyl alcohol and para cumulyl alcohol eater. And this is the uh, uh, amount of the uh, of the chemical compound in in the extract and their uh, antioxidant activities. I also investigate the two compound uh, synergism by uh, mix uh, the one compound from the uh, one compound from the uh, Embika and one compound from the Galanko, and the result shows uh, uh, allergic acid uh, when paired with the uh, para acetoxy alcohol and allergic acid when paired with the para cumulyl uh, alcohol ethyl ether can have the uh, synergism effect by decrease in the by decrease in the uh, 
uh, intracellular reactive oxygen species and uh, increase the cell viability. And for the anti-hyperlipidemic uh, mechanism, I, uh, the inhibition of cholesterol biosynthesis in our body is uh, one of the uh, mechanism uh, in uh, lowering the, the, the lipid. Yeah. And for in this process, uh, HMG-CoA reductase is, uh, is a key enzyme uh, to turn HMG-CoA to uh, mevalonic acid and uh, go to uh, synthesize the, the cholesterol. So if we can inhibit the, this enzyme, uh, uh, we can uh, have the drug or food that uh, prevent the uh, hypercholesterol. So uh, the the assay is based on the uh, spectrophotometer measurement of the uh, yeah of of the uh, decreasing of the NADPH. NADPH uh, will uh, uh, the the oxidation of uh, NADPH is decreased. Uh, that is 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 decreased when uh, by uh, HMG CoA reductase with the HMG CoA uh, substrate. And this. Uh, and this uh, table shows that the Philatus embica and uh, uh, Alpinia galanca uh, has the percent inhibition nearly 50% and 10% respectively, whereas the combination have about the 20% inhibition. Uh, and the uh, gallic acid that uh, contained in the Philanthus ambica is a, key, uh, is a key chemical that uh, have this effect. And the uh, chemical constituent in the galanco, they didn't have the, the uh, uh, they uh, did, did not uh, inhibit the enzyme. So we can conclude that the uh, Philanthus ambica uh, contribute the uh, contribute uh, the inhibition of this enzyme. So let me conclude. Uh, a combination of uh, Philanthus ambica and Alpinia galanca in the ratio of seven to three uh, exhibit synergistic uh, antioxidant activities, and it shows protective effect against uh, hydrogen peroxide induced oxidative state in endothelial cells and uh, that show the uh, synergistic antioxidant component uh, shows enhanced uh, cytoprotective activities. Yeah. And uh, Philanthus uh, Embica uh, contribute the HMG-CoA reductase inhibition of the combined extract yeah, and the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme may not be the pathway affected by the compound uh, in the galanco. Yeah. yeah, I would like to know that the Celebot Awards uh, the 2012 National Nanotechnology Center and Julalongkorn University. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jasek. Okay, we do have a few minutes if anybody have any questions uh, to any speakers please uh, use the mic introduce yourself and ask the questions please introduce yourself use the mic and uh, ask the questions uh, my question may be general for the four speakers we are talking about uh, package material and most of them mentioned that we can use the metal nanoparticles for in the preparation of uh, package material. Uh, 
Uh, but I, as I know, these metals such as zinc oxide, nanoparticles, or titanium nanoparticles, have side effect if they migrate or transfer to the food. Did you see this side effect or no? Okay, we will ask. Uh, uh, really, uh, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, uh, if it is uh, increased above the international standards, it will be uh, toxic or uh, cause something wrong for the body. But uh, I, uh, I make the migration test for the, uh, I package the cheese, soft dry cheese, by film, biofilm contain zinc oxide nanoparticles from zero to uh, 5%. And the uh, test of the migration, I found no migrated. But in case of titanium dioxide, the titanium dioxide migrate to the food, to the cheese, but is under international standards. Also, uh, we all cos cosmetics material based on zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And all over the world use the cosmetic every day. And the, the uh, study of the toxicity is still under investigation, it, mainly in package application. Yes, but I think that the migration maybe depend on uh, the condition of storage and uh, long time storage maybe accumulate yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, yeah, okay. yeah uh, the same thing. Uh, we do uh, uh, a migration uh, study, and uh, for our. Uh, 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 fish gelatin nanoparticle that we use to encapsulate our bioactive uh, compound, we still within under under control, yeah? Uh, uh, similarly for the salicylic acid. But when we apply this to different uh, uh, bioactive peptide, for example, and then we need to conduct another study, the phenomena is slightly different. So what we conclude from this is for every single sample, every single application of nano uh, technology, nano encapsulation, etc., we need to conduct a proper study before it is being properly applied in industry. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? No one? Thank you very much, all the speakers. I appreciate it. Thank you for your presentations. Can you display the video? Are we going to for the award ceremony? You want to see the award? Display the video which I missed. I understand, but they will start okay. the award ceremony. Okay. Uh, apology for uh, okay. waiting because I go in to send Dr. Isan Ovut back, okay? And now we are finished our session. Yes. Yes, and now. I would like to invite Assistant Professor Dr. Vanida Nopontan, Deputy Director of the Halan Science Center, Thai Chulalongkorn University, to express token of appreciation to our speakers. Uh, may I invite Professor Dr. Irwandi Jaswir for IIU, from IIUM Malaysia. He is the speaker and speaking about innovative food materials for enhancing the quality of halal products. Thank you very much for a very powerful presentation. And please still remain on the stage for, uh, for the group photo session. And may I invite Professor Dr. Ahmed Yusuf uh, from National Research Center, Doki Cairo, Egypt, from his uh, topic of novel materials for food packaging applications. Thank you very much for a very powerful speech presentation for today. Thank you.
And may I invite Dr. Ashari Suksuwan, Head of Scientific Affairs Service of the Halan Science Center, Chulalongkorn University, on his topic of speech today is polymers in pharmaceutical application. Thank you very much for Dr. Ashari Suksuwan for a very powerful <laughs> presentation. And may I invite Dr. Chaisak from the Pharmaceutical Faculty, Chulalongkorn University, on very powerful presentation topic about herbal for today. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. And may I invite Chairperson and all of the speaker in front of the stage to uh, token a photo group session for memorable. for a very powerful speech for today. And now it's time for coffee, for coffee break for 15 minutes. And outside of this conference, we have a poster presentation. You can enjoy and see, see the look the poster presentation from many scientists from around, around the world. <laughs> yes. And the and the, I would like to inform about the the fourth session for today is the last session for today is the topic of technological edge for halal products and services, which uh, will begin at the fifteen and a half. So now you have, can have a coffee break for 15 minutes or you can enjoy the poster presentation and we will come back to see you again in the 15 and a half. Thank you for your participation. Thank you.